Good morning. Welcome to our third lecture, POP 101, Introduction to Public Administration 1. I am your course lecturer, Professor Keto Moti. Today, we'll be looking at public administration and the argument whether it is a science or not. But before we do that, let us quickly review what we did last week. Last week, we looked at the similarity and the differences between public and private administration. In that lecture, we looked at issues like skills, knowledge, as being similar both in public and private administration. We also noted that public administration, unlike private administration, is governed and directed by government and not individuals. I hope you recall what we did and you have been going through those notes. Today, like I said, our topic is public administration, a science or an art. The objective of today's session or lecture is that at the end you should be able to explain public administration, public administration either as a science a social science or an art. We will divide, we will therefore divide this lecture into three sections. The first section will deal with public administration is not a science. In other words, we are going to argue that public administration is not a science. In the second section, we will look at the argument that public administration is a science. Lastly, in the third section, we will look at the argument whether or not public administration is an art. And then we will conclude where we actually belong. This debate has been an ongoing debate and it's a debate that will not end whether public administration can be regarded as a science or not. In this first section, we are arguing that public administration is not a science. There has been these conflicting views and opinions regarding this issue of whether public administration is a science or not. A number of thinkers, which we shall be mentioning their names later, have observed that no one knows better than the occupants of the social science chairs. What we mean by social science chairs here is the professors of the discipline of public administration. The argument is that they themselves know deep down within them that they cannot refer to public administration as a science. It is for this obvious reason that the status of science has been denied the discipline of public administration. And those who argue that it is not a science have one thing in common. They say that human affairs do not obey cause and effect rules as it happens in the sciences. That human affairs are very, very complex and difficult to demonstrate in a particular law like we have in physics chemistry, and biology. This argument is based on the definition of science 
that science is a systematic way of acquiring knowledge. It therefore means that in science there is a method. There is a method. This method must be systematic. That is, it cannot be haphazard. And it has to be universal. Because everywhere you go, the law should apply. However, the argument is that because public administration may not have methods that are systematic and universal like physics, biology and chemistry, we are denied the status of science. Therefore, Feiner in 1970 was of the opinion that we cannot clearly say what administrative principles are or are not. Therefore, we should deny public administration the status of being a science. In other words, he's saying our principles are not the same thing as the principles of public uh, physics or chemistry where a law in physics says anything that goes up must come down. It may not be the same in public administration since we are dealing with human beings. And so we should be denied the status of being a science. What are the arguments put forward by these thinkers who refuse public administration the status of a science? These are some of the arguments. It is argued that public administration has not any agreed principles like the physical sciences, chemistry and physics. That even at a conference in the United States late in the 60s, where professors of public administration were invited to give one principle of public administration, they did not come to any consensus to put forward a single principle that could be acceptable to the rest of the members. But in the sciences, almost all scientific principles in the physics, chemistry, biology are universally accepted. The second reason is that unlike the sciences of physics and chemistry, public administration deals with human behavior. And this is very critical because human behavior is not subject to uniformities of nature. Human beings differ. It is therefore not possible to isolate, measure, and classify facts of administration with the type of exactness that we find in theories in physics, chemistry, and biology. And so since we don't deal with inanimate things like physics and chemistry, but deal with human beings, it is difficult to regard public administration as a science in the sense that we regard physics and chemistry as a science. The third argument put forward also points out to the issue of the results of the physical sciences. The argument here is that the results of the physical sciences can be studied in absoluteness, irrespective of the circumstances of time, place, environment, social setting. What does that mean? It means that Wherever you find the physical sciences, anywhere it is studied in a lab, anywhere, if you mix one or two chemical, it will give you the same result, not minding the place, the environment, and the social setup. However, in public administration, the results of our outcomes may not be uniform. For instance, 
if you look at judicial administration and judicial administration in Nigeria and educational administration in Nigeria or police administration in Nigeria may not be the same as judicial administration, police administration and educational administration in another country. Therefore, we find it that we cannot have uniform results, may not be the same. Even in the same country, we may not have uniform results as in the physical sciences. The fourth reason given by these scholars is that the results of the physical sciences are accurate, they are uniform, they are systematic, and they are dependable. They highly change their character. But in public administration, because as we have already mentioned, we are dealing with human beings who change very often. And as such, the results of public administration may not be as uniform, accurate, systematic, and defendable, dependable as those of the physical sciences. For this reason, the sciences deny public administration the status of a science. Finally, in looking at the principle of public administration with a view to their practical use and implication for administrative behavior, we discover that we cannot be as rational as the physical sciences. There are numerous irrational habits and factors in human beings. Our hopes, our habits, our fears, our likes, our dislikes make public administration sometimes inconsistent. Whereas in the sciences, the physical sciences, there can be rationality in the things that they do. So, for the above reasons, public administration is denied the status of a science. However, there are those who argue that if public administration, or rather, if science is a discipline that has to do with methods that is systematic, methods that can be replicated, that is repeated. If that is the definition of science, that it is a method of acquiring knowledge that has a methodology which is systematic and that can be replicated or repeated, then there are those who argue that public administration also has a method of collecting knowledge, of getting information, and that can follow a systematic process, and we can also replicate our findings. And because of that, these people argue that on that basis, public administration can be regarded as a science. And so in this second section, we are going to be looking at the argument that public administration can be regarded as a science, even though it may not be the exact as the physical sciences as we have noted in the first session. What are these arguments to back up this view? Number one, it is argued that public administration is an activity that demands correct analysis and accurate orientation in relation to other sciences. In other words, we can analyze and through our analysis, we come to understand and make final decisions based on a rational process. And this is the highest objective of science, that the process should be systematic and can be replicated. And so if it is possible that we can also gather our data or information and analyze them and make a rational decision 
as the sciences, then we can argue that public administration is a science. The second reason was proposed by Wallace Dunham in 1936. He was of the opinion that a public administration is a social science and it has its own techniques, it has its own abstractions, it has its own problems of theory, just like the sciences. Therefore, it is vitally concerned in integrating other sciences like psychology and social psychology. And at this point, action is also involved, just like the sciences. What Wallace is saying is that public administration is a science, and we can call it a social science because it has its own techniques, just like the physical sciences. It has its own abstractions, and it has its own theories, just like the physical sciences. The third reason was given by Feifner in 1960. Feifner observed that specialists in public administration have achieved considerable degree of uniformity in their thinking on the problems of public administration, irrespective of the subject matter. In other words, he's saying that we have a uniform way of thinking about public administration issues, whether in Nigeria or any other country. And that uniformity is not different from what the sciences are thinking about. And this uniformity is arrived at as a result of clear, thoughtful collection of information and systematically analyzing it. In that case, he's arguing that public administration can be regarded as a science. So, if we have a considerable degree of uniformity in the manner we approach solution to our problems, just like the other sciences, then we are a science. This argument was also made in 1936, even before Feifner, by Alwick, that public administration has a uniformity in the manner of approach to solving its problems. Another reason was given by Beard. Beard says, and I quote, if we rightly use the term science in connection with a body of exact knowledge derived from experience and observation and a body of rules or axioms which experience has demonstrated to be applicable to concrete practice and to work out in practice approximately as forecast, then we may say approximately that we are also speaking of the science of administration. What does he mean by that? What Beard means is that if science is a body of knowledge that is derived from experience, that has a body of rules that can be demonstrated and applied in concrete practice, then public administration also has a body of knowledge. It is derived from experience. We have a body of rules. We have, we have experience that have been demonstrated in practical, concrete terms to solve problems. And so we can speak of public administration as a science of administration. All week in 1937, continued with this argument. He is one of the thinkers who believe that at present, even though public administration is not exact science as the physical sciences, to a large extent, we also collect data, we significantly get involved in research, on the subject matter of public administration. And so he is of the view that a day is coming and it is near when public administration will become a perfect science like physics, chemistry, or biology using the same methods and procedures. Finally, Willoughby in 1939. 
1958 observed that in administration there are certain fundamental principles of general application that are similar to those that characterize any science and we must observe that in the end of administration we are referring to the issue of efficiency in operation and these are principles that are determined only by rigid application of the scientific method. What Willoughby is saying that we have principles in public administration. These principles are of general application. Anywhere you go in the world, they are applicable. And science also have their own principles derived from investigation, just like public administration has. And therefore, this discipline can be given the status of a science. There are those who say that if public administration is not a science or even a social science, it can be regarded as an art. And therefore, that is what we are going to look at now in the third section. The third section deals with public administration as an art. The following are some of the arguments that are advanced in this regard. One, that public administration deals with actual working of administration. An administrator has to think and decide whenever he meets with any particular problem or solution. And this is what the artist does. An artist deals with actual working of situation. So when he sees a situation, he decides, he thinks about it, he decides, and finds out what solution and public administration can be regarded as an art. Because any particular problem that we are faced with, we can think about it, we can be creative about it, and find a solution to it. This view was propounded by Linda Ulrich. And he observed that administrative skill cannot be bought. There are no short, there are no hints and tips and shortcuts. It has to be paid for in the only currency which is sound in the market, that is hard study, hard thinking, mastery of the intellectual principles, reinforced by reflection on actual problems. And for him, these are what the artist deals with and therefore to him public administration can be regarded as an art. Oldwell Telt in 1951 wrote a book called The Art of Public Administration in argument and in defense of the fact that public administration is an art. He specifically authored this book to defend his position that public administration is an art. This is what he said. If the works, if the works with pens on clay, with combination of words and ideas in literature, if these are fine arts, we are certainly entitled to call our label fine art, which will bring closer together in purpose the organized relation of individuals and groups to each other. In other words, he's saying that if the artist paints on clay and he combines words and ideas in literature, and that is known as fine art, the work of the public administration is also a label of fine art because he brings together the relationship of individuals and groups to accomplish things. And this is artistic, according to him. Thus, administration is an art, and it has evolved gradually. Although some principles of administration are useful to, the, to any administrator, this knowledge is not sufficient, and he has to apply his mind to a particular situation. And then he can take an action 
to achieve his end. In which case he's saying that the administrator is creative and creativity is an aspect of art and therefore public administration is an art. In other words, he's emphasizing the fact that even though we have principles of public administration and these are useful to the administrator and they help him in taking decision, nevertheless, the administrator must apply his mind to any particular situation that he or she faces and that helps him or her to find a decision that can affect what he or she is looking at and that is artistic. According to Gladden, he said that administration is a specialized activity which has gradually emerged with the development of society, that it is a normal product of the division of labor. Therefore, administration is a distinct activity calling for specialized knowledge and technique, which is similar to art. In conclusion, our discussion today we have observed that public administration has both the qualities of science, social science, and art. But in reality, it is neither a perfect science nor a complete art. Therefore, we can say that public administration is no doubt one of the social sciences because, as we have argued, it has a method, it has a system of collecting information and it can be replicated, that is, what we do can be done again somewhere else and we may get similar results. Although we cannot claim that we have the same principles as the physical sciences and our artistic aspect of knowledge is not the same as the art. In summary, we have seen the conflicting views and opinion regarding public administration being a science or not. We have discussed the views of thinkers who refute the claim that public administration is a science. We have also examined the argument put forward by another group of thinkers who consider public administration as a science. And we have concluded with the argument of those who say that public administration is an art. Finally, we can say emphatically that public administration has the qualities of science. It also has the qualities of social science. But we can conveniently place it under a social science since it does not have the qualities of exact science and exact act. In our next lecture, therefore, we shall examine public administration and the other social sciences to see how it fits into these disciplines and how it has emerged over time. Thank you for listening, and I hope you will take your time to ensure that you read through the notes that are given here. Finally, let me, before we close for today, let me remind you that the assignment on the similarities and differences between public and private administration should be done. It will be posted on your elements, LMS, and you will do it and return it via the same route on August 18th, Thursday, August 18th. I repeat, your assignment on the differences and similarities between public and private administration. 
the assignment will be uploaded on your element. You are to do it and submit via the same. And the duration is between now and 18th of August. Remember, this duration is the duration within which you can submit. After 18th, you cannot submit because the portal for submission will be closed. I hope you will let your colleagues who have not heard this to get aware that you have to submit your assignment between now and 18th of August. Thank you.